before we get into the video today, I just want to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, Gnostic TV. Gnostic TV is ancient wisdom reimagined. This is a Netflix for those who are spiritually curious and want a place to go where there is no censorship. I personally am doing a whole series on Gnostic TV called The Esoteric Explorer, where I am providing exclusive content to Gnostic. Gnostic TV is a host to all sorts of different content creators, many of whom are your old favorites. If you would like to check out Gnostic TV, there is a link down in the description box below. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce. I have no idea why my camera is so close to my face right now, you guys. I've, I've just noticed it when I saw I don't know how to fix it. So I apologize. I'm going to sit back here. I'm just going to hold my microphone back here. Like, Well, you're so pretty. There's no problem. You're lucky you don't have like wrinkles and things. So you, you're good, girl. You're good. <laughs> say i before jessica signed on i was giving shanti a little tutorial on editing and i let her know my secret sometimes i'm gonna look like you too i'm gonna look like you too watch me girls like, and guys we'll watch me. This up a little bit we're gonna look a little younger for our audience so anyway but i don't know why i'm so close you guys i'm gonna i'm gonna back up but <laughs> Really cool show today. I've got two of my favorite people on the planet. I've got my southern sister, Jessica, who is, you guys know Jessica on my channel. She's from she's from Georgia too, just like me. We feel like Mahaley Lancaster brought us together, which is a story for another day we'll have to share with Shanti. Mahaley was one of us. Shanti, let's just put it that way. And she was a Georgia yeah. girl as well. And then we've got I've got my other southern sister over all the way in South Africa, Shanti. From the southern point of Africa, yes, and the most southern tip of of the world <laughs> uh, what, have you, what have you called it before you're like we're at the ass end of africa or something what is it you say Shanti? i'm always at the ass end of africa yes <laughs> I've been to South Africa. South Africa is a beautiful country actually the the countryside of South Africa in certain areas almost looks identical to Georgia it's very similar in its terrain and um and we have a you know both we were chatting offline Shanti you and I we are such weirdos when it comes to like the paranormal like you and I have had so many ghost experience we're very into the like the spirits we've seen demons angels but both you and I are complete novices when it comes to the cryptid world, which is Jessica is not a novice when it comes to the cryptid world. Exactly. Exactly. I said I said to you guys today, today I'm a beginner in this class because I have no idea what we're gonna or I mean I do know what we're gonna be talking about, but I'm super excited as well to hear from from you, Jessica, as to what you you know, you and your big footy stuff with huge feet. <laughs> I'm just assuming it has big feet, right? Yes, I, I see you've got a foot behind you on your picture behind your head. I like that. You got a big foot right there. Yes. Okay. <laughs> it had tiny feet though, like little elf feet. That would be kind of funny if that that would be not having a sense of humor. But before we get started, Jessica, because because I asked Shanti before when I was like, Shanti, just clarify, have you ever seen a cryptid? And you were like, what the hell is a cryptid? So Jessica, for our audience who are new to this, who are novices like Shanti and me, what is a cryptid a cryptid is an animal that has been said to exist but has not been proven to exist that's right. the actual definition of a cryptid but see if you if you put apply that definition to things like bigfoot then bigfoot's not a cryptid anymore because i've i've proven that Bigfoot exists, you know, people on my team, we know that they exist. We've seen them. We've interacted with them. So you can't really call Bigfoot a cryptid anymore. So I'm not really a cryptid hunter at that point. So, <laughs> but, but that's, that's the definition of what a cryptid is. Uh, and that can be anything from, well, they say Bigfoot. Uh, a lot of us field researchers are, are proving the existence of these things. There are videos, there are pictures, there are recordings. Uh, Bigfoot is so real that people have analyzed their language. Okay, 
Um, so, but anything from like Bigfoot to Dogman and werewolves to Mothman to lake monsters to the little people and elves and gnomes, you name it, they're they're cryptids. Yeah. Okay, so they'd be considered cryptids. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So, and it's so interesting. So Jessica and I, this past weekend, as many of our viewers know, you were speaking up at a conference here in Georgia. It was a Bigfoot kind of convention. And you you, you do these a lot where you go and you speak um, for people to travel in to, to learn more about, about this Bigfoot experience. And there's, I kind of wanted to recap some of that with you, Jessica, because I personally like Shanti, someone that's never experienced a cryptid before, I've experienced other things. Um, I absolutely do believe that they exist. I don't need to see it. There's so much out there from so many people from all through the ages that, that to me, it's like, yeah, obviously not, not this many people are in on some hoax, right? Throughout the ages. Like we, there's so many people, but one thing that was super interesting, Jessica, the first speaker, who's one of your friends, he asked a question to the audience. He said, how many people are here today because they believe that Bigfoot exists? And majority of the people in the room raised their hand. Then he said, how many people are here today because they're skeptical of the existence of Bigfoot? And only a couple of people raised their hands. And then he said, how many people here are knowers? Which I would assume to mean that they've absolutely experienced this before. They know it was something that wasn't of this dimension and a lot of people did raise their hands and it kind of really kind of touched me in a way i, I mean i'm a i'm a Sc scorpio moon you guys so i get emotional at the weirdest things but um it seems like so many people find themselves in these 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 paranormal communities these worlds not because they've chosen to be there but because they've had an experience that they cannot explain and it absolutely changes them as a person it changes their perspective on life i think it's an, an, a door opener it's a gateway to the quote-unquote truth or world where you start going well if this exists and we've been lied to about this what else are they lying to us about so for starters jessica can can you share with our audience like what got you into bigfoot research what turned you into hunting for this Hunting in the sense, guys, I want to clarify this as in locating, as having research on, on these, on these, these beings, what got you there? Well, I started off as a kid having paranormal experiences. So I was seeing ghosts. Uh, I was always going outside to look for UFOs. And uh, I mean, there's, there's a long story behind this and it does have roots in Mahaley Lancaster. I know you and I talk about her all the time. Um, but it's, you know, and, and I'll give a brief overview because when I was in elementary school, I used to do, I used to do storytelling contests at my elementary school. And, uh, the two years that I did those, I won and they were, I was reciting stories that my grandmother had written about Mahaley Lancaster and ghost of the civil war. Okay. There's two different, two different stories. After winning those, those contests, I was giving like encyclopedia Britannica's that were about the solar systems and black holes and stuff. And so I got really into like UFOs and strange things like that. Okay. When I was a kid and, uh, and it kind of set me on this path, you know, I was the kid that would always go to, to the, to the library and look for all the ghost books, the books about Bigfoot and, and werewolves and monsters. Uh, so I was into that kind of stuff, but yeah, I was seeing ghosts even as a young lady, a young woman, I'm an old lady now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm kidding. But when I was like in my 20s, you know, uh, I was having uh, ghost experiences with ghosts. And uh, er, my early 30s, my brother passed away in a car accident. And uh, and I went searching for answers at that point. Uh, all of my, my spiritual gifts started coming online a lot more. Uh, I started connecting with the other side as far as ghosts. I was seeing full-bodied apparitions after he passed away, the solid figures that were not there you know it wasn't they were they were ghosts uh and uh, i got i got really interested in the esoteric you know uh getting my tarot cards read i was like well if i can read these if they can read my cards i want to learn how to read cards yeah. so I, I got into that um let's see i'm it, oh i started ghost hunting too okay with like with some friends and uh and i stumbled across a group of men uh at a meeting one night that my mom was going to she took me along for the ride for this meeting and they were Bigfoot field researchers out of North Georgia. 
And, uh, and so I went and I was, I, I saw it. Well, if ghosts are real and I've seen ghosts and I know they're real and UFOs, I've seen UFOs, I've seen all sorts of weird stuff. Why would Bigfoot not be real? Uh, and, yeah. uh, and so, so I went to this meeting, I met the gentleman, they, they had real evidence of Bigfoot. Uh, from foot castings, the print castings, to um, they had a really interesting way of researching Bigfoot. They were into the mind, body, spirit aspect of Bigfoot. Uh, one of them was a highly trained remote viewer, and uh, and so they 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 were actually establishing communication amongst themselves in the Bigfoots telepathically uh, and energetically. Wow. So so that's. So it really piqued my interest, but I had a bunch of questions for them at the end of their presentation. And at the and at the end, I think they saw that I was really interested. So they invited me on an expedition. And uh, and so I went. I went. I, I couldn't believe my friends thought I was crazy. They thought I was absolutely nuts. Uh, I, I was going into the woods with a group of strange men to go hunt for a Bigfoot. Okay. And uh, and so, but I, I got all my gear together and I went... On that expedition, I actually had Bigfoot encounters that weekend, UFO encounters, ET activity, and uh, and I'm here today talking to you ladies because of that trip that I went on. Um, I'm now the cryptid huntress. Okay, wow, so it all started with that. How long ago was this? 2011. It was either 2011 or 2012. It's it's right. been a while. And you yeah. stayed quiet for a very long time, didn't you, Jessica? You didn't tell people. And I understand that being in the South, you know, Jessica, speaking of like Mahaley Lancaster, like I always say on my channel, there are two sides to the South. You have the very fundamentalist, very religious side, but then there's this other side, this very eccentric side. And uh, Jessica's definitely, and myself, and I think my family, you know, will, they'll go to church on Sunday, but they're conjuring spirits on sunday night you know we have this you know like midnight in the garden of good, there's a famous scene in midnight in the garden of good and evil where he's out walking his ghost dog and like the guy from the north is like freaked out that he's walking a ghost dog and no one in savannah georgia blinks an eye because that's normal in the south like duh of course he's walking his ghost dog you know so we have and i said before jessica you know it's so humid down here in the south like i do believe that the weather does have a lot to do with it because there's so much water in the air that i think things do come through especially with ghosts i think they're able to materialize better down here in the south and uh, elsewhere in a more drier climates because of the elements and we have had a lot of destruction down here and there has been a lot of blood spilled on the south and so it, it you know um most how you know like a lot of places in the south you, if you're selling if you're selling your home the realtor by law is obligated to tell potential buyers if the, if the house is haunted by law in a lot of places in here in the south that's how normal this kind of eccentric side is but again you do have that side of the south the bible thumpers the fundamentalists where you do have to be careful sometimes as chauncey and i know very well um because <laughs> you will get called names and you you know so anyway but something you said that was can we think of but bigfoot we often think of like the pacific northwest right that's where a lot of people claim to see Bigfoot. But Jessica, I learned something this weekend. George is one of the top hotspots for Bigfoot, isn't it? It is. Wow. We rank we rank 10th in all 50 states. We are 10th uh, in the highest ranking, I guess, or the highest number of sightings and reports of Bigfoot in the United States. Uh, now, what, what was really shocking to me when I first learned, it wasn't super shocking, but I was perplexed that Florida is third, third highest. So Florida has the third highest amount of Bigfoot sightings only, and I, I believe it's California or Oregon or Washington. Uh, they, they have some pretty high sight, you know, rates of sightings, but um, Florida, the home of the skunk ape, down there uh they and, and yeah there are different types of bigfoots too uh they're regional and so there's not just that one type of bigfoot that you see that video we call her patty okay that's the famous bigfoot footage uh from the patterson gimlin film that was filmed in northern california and uh and that was back in i think it was 1967 if i'm not mistaken but that is the that is like the pinnacle of like bigfoot right there it's like the 
she and it was a she by the way patty was a woman a female and you could tell by her breast okay and uh and we have i've seen the the original video of that and we do see children she, I th we think she had at least two kids uh in the background there as well but uh but that is the iconic bigfoot uh that everyone has the stickers on the back of their cars like myself you know and uh and it's like the the silhouette is patty my boyfriend no. has one now, just so you guys know. I think my, my boyfriend made himself an honorary member. He wants to go big funny big funning with the with the team next time. Actually, we went out into the woods with with you guys. We were away. I was like, Did, you gotta be in shape to hunt some Bigfoots. So let me tell you, the Appalachian Mountains are not forgiving when it comes to the steep hills and the you gotta be really in shape to do this, to be out in the woods like that. Do you think it's because of the Appalachian Mountains, Jessica, that we have so it, the, the Appalachian Mountains are magical and terrifying at the same time? So much. Yeah. I mean, I could do a show every day on just the Appalachian Mountains la legends and lore and all the the different cryptids that we have in uh, just the Cherokee legends alone uh, from Spearfinger to, you know, you name it, the Skinwalkers. I mean, we have we have reports of modern day dinosaur sightings in the Appalachian wow. Mountains. Oh, yeah. Dogman, werewolves, um, witches. Spearfinger is my favorite, though. That's definitely one of my favorite um one of my favorite characters out of the Appalachians, if you want to call it that. You told uh, but me I, about I, Spearfinger. What? Tell our audience a little bit about Spearfinger. Spearfinger. Spearfinger is a terrifying, shape-shifting witch uh, that roams the mountains, mostly the Smoky Mountains of Tennessee and North Carolina, but North Georgia. I mean, I believe that my team, we've had at least one or two encounters with Spearfinger out there. And, um, and it may not be on a three-dimensional level, it's almost like her spirits out there, you know, in, a, yeah. in another dimension. So it's really interesting. And that sounds a little crazy to the, to the normal person. I know, but uh, it makes sense to me and my team because <laughs> we experience some weird stuff out there. What is, uh, she, what is her purpose? I mean, what does she do? Oh, well, she, well, this is a shape shifting. I'm almost kind of like a demon in a way yeah. because she takes the form of an old lady like an yeah. old rag, I guess you could, you could call it. And she has a long finger, a spear that comes off of her index finger. And what she'll do is she'll hide that, that finger. And uh, she, she kind of lulls, she, she entices children to her. She loves children. Uh, she actually loves to eat children. Okay. Which <laughs> is really odd. Right. And, uh, and so she'll, she'll make friends with children. Sometimes she, pretends to be she'll shapeshift into their loved ones and uh but she will she'll trick children to come over to her she'll uh stroke their hair and when they fall asleep on her lap she sticks her spear into their back and pulls out their liver and eats their liver so she loves to eat liver that's her thing um now the liver, interesting, interesting sorry to intervene but interesting the liver because if you look at the liver that's the organ in the body obviously that it it, it stores the most toxins and it's the, the seat of anger, basically, when you're looking at the body parts. So it's interesting to me that she would go for the liver. I mean, why not the heart? Why not the brain? Why the liver? Interesting. I've, I thought that same thing. Yeah. So wow. well, there, there are stories of the Cherokee warriors, actually, the, the people in the tribe are getting together and the men luring her into their their area uh and unaliving her let's say unaliving okay and uh mm -hmm. and and they had to actually go for her hand when they were shooting arrows at her the arrows would pop off of her they wouldn't actually penetrate her skin and so she but she's known also as the stone coat witch and uh once you start doing Bigfoot field research, you'll start learning about the stone coat giants, which we, which are Bigfoots basically, because right. arrows right. bounce right off of them. Well, she's the stone coat witch. And, uh, and so a little chickadee or a tufted titmouse, a little bird landed on her hand as the warriors were shooting arrows at her. And it was as if to say, Hey, shoot here. And inside her hand, I think it was the opposite hand of the one that had the spear in it. She holds her heart. And so the heart was beating in her hand. So they were able to shoot her heart in her hand and that, that unalived her. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a very interesting story. And, uh, but, but when I'm in the woods and we don't use flashlights and stuff, usually it's dark and, uh, I've heard tapping on a tree, tap, 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 tap. And in my mind, I'm seeing Spearfinger tapping her spear. 
<laughs> so it, it, so it's a little creepy. So obviously she's she's not on the earth plane. This is her spirit that uh, or yeah that that room very interesting you say that because i'd love to like share with you as well a couple of years ago when i was i work a lot in namibia which is certainly i mean if you're the namib desert um and especially an area there called the moon valley um it it uh, it's part of earth's original crust i mean that part of africa is absolutely magnificent you go into for example so i mean that where the stone people are they i mean you like this big and these rocks are in the shapes of people and animals it is absolutely ma magical so there's a lot of and, and angelina jolie by the way um is so loving that place she's definitely got her blood invested in there and all sorts of things shiloh was born there and when you look at why these people actually um to make that happen it's because that's the part that they claim they claim that but interesting um there was a child um on one of my trips there the day i arrived there the news broke that the day before a little nine or ten year old girl um was murdered and alive as you say and completely dismembered so her head was gone her and everything so i was actually working with the police um to try and find out what happened to that child and it was insane because i immediately said firstly this is muti muti is witchcraft in africa it's called muti and i you talk about the spear finger there was a witch exactly uh far away like in the in the area but quite 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 a way away who, the way you explain, also with the kids, um, she shapeshifted. She was this, usually this beautiful young girl. Thereafter, she became this ancient old witch and she had a blood disease. So she ate this child as well, and specifically her sexual organs, which I find particularly interesting. And the whole thing was to keep her revived and what have you. It was just insane. I mean, when I look, when I was telling the cops the story, thank God they were African because the African people understand this. Um, if it had it been a European cop, he would definitely he would have I looked think at the, me. And the cops, uh, Jessica, we talked. The cops in the southeast in the Appalachians, they totally, totally would have been like, "Yep." Yep, they have stories about the same side. They same, same, same. I think you, you can't like in areas like that, like you're talking about Shanti or like in Appalachia, you can't live in Appalachia for more than a week without realizing you're powerless. Like you, yeah. there, there is a, an energy in, and I was telling Jessica, like when we were leaving um, the mountain on Saturday night and you really definitely like for me anyway, like when you're on the Appalachian mountains, I always want to be off of the mountain by the time the sun sets because you get disoriented. Like it's, there was this voice and I didn't say anything to anybody as we were leaving. So I didn't want to freak anybody out that kept telling me if the mountain doesn't want you to leave, you're not going to leave. Yeah. As we were trying to get back, cause we were off trail, totally off trail, trying to get back to the main road. And I didn't say anything to anybody else until we got into the car. And then I like text Jessica and I said something to my boyfriend. I was like, this voice kept telling me, if the mountain doesn't want you to leave, you're not going to leave. But the, we know the Appalachian Mountains is the oldest mountain chain in the world. And so we look at like, there's places, if you look at people who explore Appalachia, there are places in Appalachia that man can't even get to, supposedly. Yeah. Regular, our regular folk can't. Isn't that, where you, where we, isn't that where the ferals are? Mm -hmm. the feral people? Yep. Yep. Um, so, yeah, we were talking about that. You just found the same channel that I've been listening to. This guy named Doug who reads stories off of Reddit. Oh, just wait. He has a whole section on Appalachia. On it's so crazy because I, I just, uh, someone sent me a link to his channel today. And just before we, I mean, you, you were doing some uh, showing me how to work certain things uh, earlier on. And you heard his voice and you said, and I said, you know what? I've just discovered this dude. So yeah. He talks, he reads stories and he grew up in upstate New York. He talks about that. So he grew up in Appalachia as well. And so it is just like, that is, it's beautiful. And the Smoky Mountains guys, what Jessica's referring to, that's an area of Appalachia. And I've, I've referenced this too on my channel. It's like Tennessee, North Carolina, a little bit of North Georgia, this little pocket. That's where most of the feral people are as well, sightings. And it's called the Smoky Mountains because the clouds 
get stuck in the mountains. And so when you are stuck, you can't see in front of your face. It gets, yeah. actually, we were driving up to the convention. We got stuck. I filmed it. I filmed, I'll, I'll, maybe I'll place it in the, in the video here so you guys can see. And all the cars, it's bright daylight, but all the cars have to turn their lights on. Everyone slows way down because the clouds have settled in. And so you literally cannot see. In, so for a, something like a cryptid or a feral person, they can roam because us humans cannot see. Do you think... All right, we're headed to the Bigfoot Convention Day, and I just wanted to record this for those of you guys who are not from the Southeast. We talk a lot about the Smoky Mountains. This is the area of Appalachia that we're in, and this is what the Smoky Mountains are like. You can't really see too far in front of you. Not see. Do you think, um, Jessica, do you think cryptids have better eyesight than we do when oh, it comes yeah. to like, the mountains? Oh, okay, well, well, they know the mountains way better than we do. They navigate them better. I mean, it's really yeah. crazy because the, the Bigfoots don't make any noise sometimes. Like, they'll just creep. They'll creep up on us, and you don't hear them at all. And uh, and so, in my experience, I mean, I believe that they are able to access Earth's natural portals. Okay, that's, that's my yeah. experience with them. Uh, I do believe that, I mean, these are ancient beings we're talking about here. Uh, and yeah. so I, they, they know the earth way better than we do. They know how to utilize everything this earth, this planet has to offer. Plus the caves, plus, plus we got the whole, the whole like rabbit hole we can go down of the underground bases that are in the mountains. Okay. So we have like government things going on out there. We have portals opening and closing. My team actually documented a portal and we sent two team members inside of it and have it on video and have them coming out and re-emerging from it. Okay, so there's all sorts of stuff, but the but the cryptids do know how to access the things that we don't know how to access yeah. out there. And I, that's two, there are two things I want. So you, I found out, we, we kind of touched on this earlier. There are four different, that we know of, four different types of Bigfoots. I, this is stuff that was new to me too, because like Shanti, I'm like, I'm the ghost girl. Like I'm the ghost girl. Like I'm not, I, I don't know. But again, I absolutely believe in that th these things exist. There's way too many people that have had these experiences and just experiencing everybody at the convention, the people that had had that were there at that found themselves at this convention because they saw something, they had an experience, what people try to tell them, oh, it was an es escaped orangutan from the zoo. And you're like, no, it's not. It's like, <laughs> <that's> not <laughs> <laughs> a sketch orangutan from the zoo. Are you I'm kidding me? I'm 49 years old. I know what an orangutan looks like. That was not what I saw, you know? <laughs> you know, and, and it's kind of nice. It, again, I got a little emotional. I was like, here are these complete strangers are that have all are all bound by this one thing, this experience that changed their view on life. And they're coming to these conventions, traveling hours just to connect with other P other exp other knowers. And then hear people like Jessica speak who can kind of maybe answer some questions for them and make them feel less crazy and less alone um, in their own, in their own little world. So what are the four types of Bigfoots, Jessica? Cause I thought this was fascinating. I know I, I take this for granted that uh, that I, I I'm always so familiar with the, the different types of Bigfoots. And then everybody has that one view of a Bigfoot, that one idea of Patty from that film in their head. But we actually have four types that we know of. OK, and Lord, don't get me don't get me started on dogmen. They have like six types. OK, of different uh, ones that have been, you know, put, uh, I guess, categorized okay so we have four types the type one is the patty type okay so that's the type that does look like patty from the patterson gimlin film of the big uh, you know eight to nine feet they can't i mean it's like nine to 13 feet and you know they can be really tall they're actually really huge uh, these are bigger ones now patty by the way was only about six feet tall so that bigfoot you'd think that she was huge and gigantic she was actually just a little bit taller than me she was petite <laughs> She was, a, she was a thick girl, okay? She was thick, but she was petite. Thick by our standards, petite by their standards. I know some women who are thick and petite. It's all good. <laughs> are you being rude about me again? <laughs> <laughs> she was matronly. Yeah. Let's put it that way. She was matronly. <laughs> she had those birth and hips. <laughs> 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 you got way more in common 
with us, then you realize, girl, she got her <laughs> You got the bad thing hips. Sucking the life out of her breast, like, girl. Oh, you know, How do you just sit down and have a daiquiri with us? We can commit. <laughs> Come chat. <laughs> oh my goodness! And she's oh, more man. friendly. Was she kind of the more? Because there's one that's friendlier, right? There's one that's a little bit more adorable. From what I saw on, on your on what you were talking about, is that what Patty would be? Yes, I'll send you this picture so you can put it. In, you can include it in the show. Uh, yeah. Well, there's there. Okay. So in that picture, she was smiling. Okay. Uh, now, now, don't let that fool you. I mean, I smile, but I will whoop somebody's butt if I have to. Okay. So. <laughs> her, her boobies, her big old boobies. Ain't scared. Patty ain't scared. She would come at you. Okay. But uh, but yes, they well, they're they're very human like. Okay. And that's the thing. A lot of times when people encounter a Bigfoot, they are shocked at how human they are. Except they're just like big I like to consider them like big big hairy humans. Okay, some of them. But now the type two is a little bit different. Type two looks like a chimpanzee. Okay, they have canine teeth that that come out of their mouth. Like they they have canines, and uh, they're more they're more monkey like or more ape like uh, than the type one, where we have Patty who looks kind of like a big hairy human, uh, but also a, almost like a perfect mix between a, an ape, like a silverback gorilla, and a human yeah. of a perfect mix. That's type one. Type two would be more like a chimpanzee with like the sharp teeth protruding from its mouth. More animals. And then we, yeah, more animalistic, okay? And they are more animalistic in their actions and the way they act. They're more of the type they are going to be just looking for food all the time. How instead. tall are they? How tall, how tall is tap two? They are going to be, they're going to be somewhere uh, kind of similar to the patty type, okay? But maybe a little bit smaller. Feet. They're going to be anywhere, they're probably about six or seven feet, seven, eight. I don't, it just depends on what area you're in, what region. Uh, in the okay. Pacific Northwest, uh, in the United States, they're going to be about six to nine or bigger. Okay. They're going to be actually bigger, probably. I mean, down here in the South, they're around six feet, seven feet, uh, as far as the skunk apes go. Now, there have been sightings in Georgia of some that were like 10, 12 feet tall. Um, so it just depends. Listen, in Alaska, there's some that are 13, 15 feet tall. Uh, sure. So Alaska, they're bigger. If I saw a 12 foot Bigfoot walking through. I would shit my pants, y'all. I would literally, <laughs> I mean, like, that's tall. I mean, I know some six foot men who are quite hairy. I mean, they're hairy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they're not, and they're not soy boys either. Like, let me introduce you to the razor, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Men can wax too. <laughs> <laughs> Introduce you to that concept. Yes. The man's oh like, <laughs> Sean. So, but that's, that's, is that what, which one's the most threatening of all four? The most, the most threatening is the next one, uh, type three. And we consider those to be a gugway. Um, kind of, uh, it, it's a, a very large, a very large uh, Bigfoot, but they have a muzzle. A long snout. Usually they have a long snout. They look kind of bab baboonish, like a baboon kind of sometimes. Or they can. Uh, they could just look like a big silverback gorilla, but with a long muzzle. Now, they do get kind of confused for a dogman and a werewolf. Uh, but they're just, they're huge. Like, they're they are really big. But they do have that long snout. And uh, and I and I consider those gugway. Now, it is debatable. It's up for debate. Everybody, everybody's kind of different. On, and they... They have their own ideas as to like what exactly is the category, like what fits into this category. So th these are these are my categories in general. Type three would be what I consider to be a gugway. Okay, some of the Native American uh, tribes will say, well, they they actually clump in gugway werewolves and dogmen together. Okay, even though that I think that they're different. I think that the gugway is more of a Sasquatch, dogmen or dogmen and werewolves. But but some people clump them all together. Okay, now the type four, we have one last type, and that's type four. Now, the type four we consider to be like a Neanderthal. Like, it looks like a, a man, like a human man, but like a caveman with a lot of hair. And we back in the 1800s, if you go back and, and read newspaper clippings, they actually used to tell the truth a little better back then for our media. And, uh, and you'll find clippings of not only, okay, not only do we have giants and giant bones were in the newspapers. They talked about giants 
here find, finding them in Indian mounds and stuff like their bot their bones buried. Well, they had a lot of they had wild man sightings and uh, and and some some wild men were actually captured and they were written about in the newspaper back then. So that would be type for the relic hominid is what those are called. Uh, mostly really? wild men. Mm hmm. Relic hom. Relic hominid. Yes. Hominid. Relic yeah. Relic hominids. Uh, there, there's some very um, popular, <clears throat> or you want to say famous cases of wild men. We had the Kentucky wild man. Uh, you can you can look all these up online. Uh, we had the Kentucky wild man. Uh, there was the Ochesi Pond wild man down in Florida. That was a man that was found at Ochesi Pond. Uh, someone actually kind of captured him, took him up to the governor's mansion in Florida. And the governor said, and I mean, because he he was a wild man. Of course they did. So he, what else? He was put on display. I would not expect anything less from the Floridians. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so they they actually took him. They kind of captured this man. Uh, they found him bathing in a pond at Ochesi Pond in North Florida, and uh, took him to the governor's mansion. The governor said, "I don't want to have anything to do with this." And so they sent him to the hospital in Chattahoochee, Florida. And uh, that's where he, he lived there until he he passed away. And they say that he's buried there on the on the grounds of the Chattahoochee Hospital now. Uh, but he was he was a certified wild man. Uh, I believe some people say that wild men are the type four are the result of a Bigfoot uh, having a baby with a human woman. So. Wow. Some, if some say if that. OK, I'm trying to I'm trying to understand how a Bigfoot Okay, so I would imagine that what type, what number Bigfoot would then impregnate? Would this not like be sort of almost like if we're looking at even the fallen angels kind of thing, that we're impregnating human women? Yeah, right? some people some people do compare them to the Nephilim. Yeah, some people yeah, the do. Nephilim. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, there. Okay, so the Native Americans have some Native Americans have stories of the Sasquatch. Uh, kidnapping their women and their children and impregnating the women. Uh, yeah. So it's, yeah. So it can be very dangerous for women and children. I, ha I have noticed that they do, the Bigfoots that we interact with do have an interest in women and children. And that's why I volunteer to be bait for research purposes. Not, not because I want to go have a baby with the Bigfoot. It's nothing like that. Okay. That's weird. Uh, but what I was actually told as well is that they weren't necessarily having sex with a woman these these the nephilim but what they were doing was just like literally taking their dna and somehow implanting it in the woman so that I they mean, could I, then like have IVF. the baby yeah like the neph yeah like ivf like well i'm just thinking listen i know some girls have had some bad dates out there but could you imagine like that hairy schlong coming at you talking about <laughs> all the wacky swing away i mean well they that's do very have interesting wow yeah, they did. Well, they do have the anatomy and they are they can. And, and here's the thing. Uh, there have been DNA tests done. Uh, there's a, a scientist, a researcher named Melba Ketchum, who did uh, the genome project where they were. She was getting uh, having getting samples like DNA samples, uh, hair samples, saliva samples, whatever she could get her hands on. And for years, she worked on this project uh, where she she discovered with the, the evidence and everything that they are partially human they have human dna they have dna it's like human i think it's on the mitochondrial dna which is i think on the mother side was uh, yeah. human but it was mixed with something else they just don't know what the other what the other is you wonder what um, darwin was actually looking at you know like because i don't think we evolved um, i don't believe we evolved from monkeys myself but what was he what what, what there's always a little bit of truth into everything they put out because they can't create anything so what what yeah. is the neanderthal what is 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 that what this is was this a time like the law of one speaks about a time when the veil when there was no veil and they had to put the veil down because we were moving really slow spiritually because we could see the finish line so they made us a little dumber so we would hurry up and so was that before the veil dropped where we have these remains of it's not human it's not it's actually maybe more nephilim maybe I, that's just that's a very interesting I, that's um and i want to i actually wanted to do a part two with you ladies over some of sightings here in georgia especially south georgia 
Um, because I don't know if Shanti knows this, RV or some other countries know this. I know Jessica and I have talked about this a lot, but North Florida, South Georgia has these it's very swampy, like the New Orleans, they call it the bayou, which is a swamp, very swampy. And, and you know, you don't mess with the swamp. Like there's kind of like the Appalachians, you got critters in the swamp that will take you down in a heartbeat. So people are very cautious. It's a great, uh, as we know from a lot of these uh, documentaries, it's a great place to drop a body because a lot of people will just drop bodies there because no one's going to go find them. Um, but North Florida, South Georgia has these uh, springs, and we've talked about them, Jessica. These, and I'll put pictures in for you guys, like Wakulla. Both Jessica and I played in Wakulla Springs as a kid. That's in North Florida. Um, I go to Itchnatuckney a lot when we're going down to Florida. It's these crystal clear blue water, freezing cold, like colder than cold springs which is a weird phenomenon when it's so hot outside and the water is so cold but there's been all these mystical like these folklore and legends around they're everywhere in north florida south georgia they're everywhere you can't go 10 miles without there being another one and they have these like mystical sayings of like them being healing they're healing springs they're crystal clear blue. They're beautiful. They don't look like they're from this earth. So do you think there's a, a, a correlation, Jessica, between these springs and the swampland mm -hmm. and cryptids? Yeah, I think there could be. I mean, the Native Americans have legends that go back uh, with the skunk apes and the Sasquatch and everything down there. And I mean, even at Wakulla, there's some some kind of like smokestacks or volcano. I forgot what they call them. Uh, my friend Connor Flynn, uh, aka Bigfoot Anonymous, uh, he has a YouTube channel and is uh, he is my local cryptid expert down there. Uh, and so he he could tell me all about it. Uh, if you want to go to his channel. Uh, yeah, there's there's something to it. It's just areas of high strangeness. I mean, I've done uh, Bigfoot field research down in Florida, uh, especially in North Florida. And I did mention the Chattahoochee Hospital where they took that wild man. Now, I did some Bigfooting on a, it was actually an investigation of a couple's home down there in North Florida uh, who they were featured on the animal planet. OK, uh, for for having a Bigfoot sighting, they had a Bigfoot on their property that came up to their back porch and was beating on their door and started and screaming uh, on their back porch where their bedroom was one night. And uh, and so I went and investigated their property. Uh, there's also a, a gentleman named Stacy Brown who's down in Florida. He is known for his famous. He and his dad have some famous skunk ape footage from down in Florida. And he got some of that footage on their property, that place that I, I investigated many years ago when my son, my son was like two or three years old back then. So it was like seven or eight years ago. Um, but yeah, there's, it's just an area of my strangeness. It's not just Bigfoot. So whenever there's a Bigfoot in the environment, there's usually UFO activity. There's usually a portal somewhere. I mean, there's, there's all sorts of high strangeness. I mean, you name it, there's something else out there. There's going to be something else. I can guarantee you it's not just Bigfoot. When you brought up something interesting at the conference that I thought was such an interesting, you know, we in, the, in this paranormal world that we all find ourselves in, you, you brought up, but people kind of tend to stay in their box. Like if you're researching ghosts, if you see an alien, you're not going to mention it. Or you know, if you're re researching Bigfoot and you see a ghost, you don't put it in your, your records. But it's like, why not? It's all coming from the same metaphysical right. you know like we should right. start acknowledging when if we're out hunting bigfoot we see a damn ufo we should write it down and it because it's interesting the cassiopeians say that bigfoot is basically the pet of the grays isn't that what my boyfriend said jessica he talked about it this weekend and he said something like that like that that they're the pet that they're kind of controlled by the grays i can't totally disagree with that okay because uh, in my experience there's usually ET activity around Bigfoots. And uh, and actually, when I was out doing my Bigfoot research, that first weekend that I went out, we had a low-flying UFO hovering over us and flying all around us out there. Uh, one of the guys and I had gone on a kamikaze mission. We were hiding in the woods. And uh, we were waiting for our team to come out. We were going to try to trick a couple of Bigfoots to step on top of us. Okay, and uh, we do stuff like that out in the field. <clears throat> and uh, while we were sitting there waiting for it to get dark. I thought I was crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. 
<laughs> we, we were put on our camo and our ghillie suits, you know. Uh, but but we were sitting out there and we started noticing like orbs. We have a lot of orbs that show up in the environment when we're uh, when we know for a fact there's Bigfoots out there. Uh, we actually had had a Bigfoot encounter the night before. So we're watching orbs and uh, what turned out to be a spacecraft was flying over us. And uh, I we didn't really know exactly what happened. But we knew we had some missing time. And uh, the equipment had malfunctioned. So his digital recorders and equipment had changed the time on his. It had gone forward an hour. Mine had gone backwards an hour on my equipment. So we we were just a little confused, but we didn't know what had happened. Uh, well, the guys, a couple of the guys were trained in remote viewing at the time. This is why we all got trained in remote viewing, because of incidents like this. So that we could actually go back and, and we could go and watch what happened. We could view it. Uh, because there's things that happen, we'll ne- we would never know unless we had remote viewed it. And uh, we had been accosted by a spacecraft that night. And uh, and shortly after all that happened, I went home and I was waking up with ETs in my bedroom after that. So um, I don't know if I had always been visited by ETs and I thought they were ghosts. OK, so here, here's where it starts to get crazy. Right. Because I would mentioned that as a young child and a, a grown, you know, a young woman, I was getting visited by spirits. That was at night. I'd wake up and they'd stand around my bed and talk to me, but their mouths would never move. They were telepathically talking to me. Well, I was waking up and having ETs doing the same thing around my bed and they're talking to me and their mouths aren't moving. So I started thinking, well, were those ghosts actually ETs? The whole time so i don't know wow. uh, it's interesting though that that was an interesting wow. video somebody played when we were there too because i've always associated orbs with ghosts but there was yes. a that was played at the conference where the orbs actually it was like a it was like a garage it was like a home camera picked up orbs morphing into aliens yeah that that actually is a video that i've been begging my friend matt to come on my show and release, it's important that we we put things out there. This is real hardcore evidence. Uh, that video came from, An- actually, it's from Angelina, Angelina Shear, who passed away a couple of years ago. She was with Tennessee MUFON, I believe. And she had this video, and she she asked Matt to not ever release it publicly. Uh, and, uh, and so that's why he's held on to it for so long. But we've been talking about it. And I think the time, the time is kind of now it's, it's right. been a while. No longer here. Right. I can understand when you're alive, not wanting it released because it's dangerous, but if it was dangerous. Here, yes. Uh, some of the implications of us even discussing the cryptid world. I mean, there's a, there's an active cover up. Okay. First of all, uh, and I'm, I'm not going to say it's just the government. I mean, it's, there's a, there's a whole lot that goes into this and there's a, a, a reason that it's so covered up. Okay, because when the general public finds out that this is real, what else are they hiding from us, you know? Exactly, exactly. And I mean, of course, you know, when you're talking about the underground bases and stuff like that, I mean, you know, I've spoken to people over the years about stuff that goes on under there there is such a big cover-up and they know exactly what's going on in there and it's like everyone talks about area 51 but hello what about the other 50 areas (laughs) (laughs) well okay well with the remote viewing stuff that i do i mean i've come across many underground facilities uh and some of them have laboratories down there where they're making animal human hybrids and chimeras and i've actually brought some gentlemen onto my shows who are actually part of the secret space program and confirmed a lot of the data that i get in my my targets that i talk about uh, where they have actually seen animal human hybrids underground uh, at these facilities and uh, yes and uh, yes like these huge big spiders they're like these that have got a five or six foot uh, leg span that actually eat humans. And when, we, when we're looking at stuff like this as well, yeah. And um, a lot of, when we're looking at the kids being, these things like literally eat babies. So what, what I was told as well is that a lot of the kids that are being um, and disappearing and these breeder programs, this is where they're going to. So there's a lot of this kind of stuff. And they, for some reason, love to uh, combine the human and the pig. 
I mean, Jesse was saying uh, when, you know, part of these programs, the breeder programs, whilst the girls are pregnant, they operate on them and they put little hooves on and pig noses and things like this. So when this baby is born, it literally is half human, half pig. And for some reason, they have a fascination with pigs. And I've since heard as well that, that the reason that the pigs are so intelligent is because they contain human DNA, that humans actually created the pigs. I mean, it's absolutely insane. Is that why so many religions say not to eat pork? Right. And I was actually mentioning that on one of my shows the other day. It's because is that why, you know, especially in, in Judaism, they're not allowed to eat pork because it's unclean. Um, and yet, how many of us are fed these poor animals, right? How mm -hmm. many of us are fed these poor animals? So it's crazy to think that. And in, isn't that on some level they've been turning us into cannibals already for such a long time? So, yeah, there's definite, definite, and spiders. They've got this absolute obsession with spiders. I've noticed with sm spiders and pigs and rabbits as well. I mean, the other day I was seeing, I was seeing stuff going around on Facebook. The new trend is women wearing rabbit teeth now. I mean, that are, but I mean, you look at the, you, you look at a lot of this, this stuff, um, the I'm bunny so rabbit teeth bunny. I'm so glad I don't have to deal with this stuff that the new trend No, no. Yeah. They're like literally wearing, I mean, there's a whole series of photographs of women now wearing these rabbit teeth. We right. just squeeze tennis balls to make our boobs bigger. <laughs> yes, but this isn't a mess, a mess. No, I was doing a mess, a mess. That was what we did <laughs> as kids. <laughs> and that was about as crazy as what we got, for sure. Wow. And if you had buck teeth, you your ass was sent to the orthodontist for braces. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You weren't trying to give yourself bunny. But that's a rabbits, uh, definitely. I mean, when you look at a lot of these pedos, they will often be wearing rabbit suits and mm. stuff like that. So for me, it's there's something crazy. Oh, hello, load shedding. <laughs> load shedding has just happened again. Government's <laughs> listening right yeah. now, Jean. Do you, do you ever? Yeah, yeah, animal? they always do. They're, 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 they're listening to everything that goes on. Yeah. So now, Jessica, you got to run, but. um. I'm going to end on this. Do you ever feel like you've been followed by the GOV? Oh man. I mean, I've got a, I've gotten a proverbial knock at my door already. Yeah. So, I mean, I used to work in government myself. Okay. So, I mean, and, and, and at this point, I don't, I don't worry about this stuff. Okay. Uh, for whatever reason, I do feel like I'm, I've been able to talk about what I talk about and I really do push the envelope and I go out on, I go out on limbs and I, I, I think outside the box and I just put things out there, but I always end my show and saying, this is for entertainment purposes only. Okay. Yeah, right. and, uh, and that's kind of how I get around that, I guess. This is for entertainment purposes only. I always think that the GOV man who watches me must be really bored because the only exciting thing I do is on YouTube. Like ever, beyond that, I'm just like at my house. He's like, I'm just like, all she does is play with her dog. <laughs> it's, um, but all right. One last thing, just because I do, when we sign off, I do want to plan a part two with you ladies, but I, for anybody watching right now, Jessica, who wants to go amateur big foot hunting in their own backyard, because even though we have an abundance of these sightings in the United States, I'm sure that's everywhere all over the world. What what would you recommend for a beginner? What do they need to do? What do they need to do to prepare for? Do they need to have protection? Like what? Like one of these? Like for protection? Like what do they need to do for somebody who wants to do it? What's your what's your tips? Oh yeah. Well, if, okay. If you want to start out, if you want to go with actual Bigfoot researchers, look up the BFRO online. That's the Bigfoot field researchers organization. They do, they do um, expeditions that you can join. Okay. And it depends on what state you're in. I mean, I know people, you know, in just about every single state that go out and do stuff down in Florida, Kentucky, I don't know, down in the South at least. Uh, but you can you can contact them and just see like join an email list, find out when people are going out. Uh, I personally don't I'm on actual research team, so we don't take extra people with us out in the field. Uh, we stick, you know, with our team for the most part. But there are expeditions that go out. Now, if you want to go out without an expedition, just go to your local campground. Okay, Bigfoots are everywhere, y'all. 
Okay. Go to your local campground, get all the, just go camping and sit around the campfire, uh, especially somewhere that has, um, if you go to the BFRO website, uh, it'll give you accounts in every state. Okay. They have all their documents are there on that website. Uh, go, uh, go to the Bigfoot mapping project, actually go to Bigfoot mapping project online. You can find out where the, the clusters of Bigfoots are. Uh, go camping there, but it, I got to warn you, where there's clusters of Bigfoot sightings, there's also clusters of missing people. Yes. Okay. So be aware. please be, be careful. Aware. Please be careful. Don't ever go by yourself. Always tell somebody where you're going. If you take your kids, please be careful. I don't recommend taking kids deep into the woods. Or, uh, or dogs, them. right? You said that's me. Don't or take dogs. dogs. Don't take Bigfoots, Bigfoots don't like dogs very much. And so you may not make it home with your dog if you're out in the woods um, with the Bigfoots. But uh, but don't don't let that stop you. Don't be scared. Don't live in fear. Uh, but yeah, just go what to- What are they good against people. dogs? What do they have against dogs? Well, they don't, I guess it's the, the dogs give their locations away potentially. Oh, right. And so, so uh, if the, sense it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So and if, if the dogs charge at them, they will take the dog and, and unfortunately they sling it across a tree usually. So you have to be very careful with dogs out there. Uh, because Bigfoots like to, they like to be incognito. They like to hide. They don't like their locations given away. They're not trying to be seen. That's right. That's right. Uh, but yeah, just just go camping, go camping somewhere. Let people know where you're going to be. Um, I recommend staying around your campground. OK, you don't have to venture far off, even at night, um, as long as you are out in the woods. The Bigfoots will come to you. You just got to act like a normal human. OK, don't get too rowdy, but uh, but they will they'll come out and they'll they'll make their presence known. It, it, like it may be after you're sleeping, but they'll let, make their presence known. My last question for our, if somebody is out just hiking and they have no intention of seeing a cryptid and they do run across one, you know, we have precautions. If you see a bear, if you see a, a poisonous snake, what is the best thing for somebody to, to do if they see a Bigfoot? Do you run or do you stand still? What is the best thing for someone to do if they do happen to run across this to keep them safe? Well, a big, a Bigfoot is probably not going to let you see it. Okay. So, uh, not not intentionally. I don't think you have to worry so much about Bigfoots. I mean, go with your gut. Okay. I personally always carry something to protect myself with. Uh, like I, I do have a firearm. I do carry it. I know some people don't like that, but it is what it is. Uh, we have to contend with large cats, uh, bears, snakes. We have a lot of things. And and if I have my kid out there on a hike, I have to protect him too. But uh, missing missing people and stuff or, or in these clusters out there where the Bigfoots are. So uh, I protect myself. Uh, you can carry bear spray, carry something just in case uh, a wild animal comes up around you. Or but with a feral the Bigfoot, person or a feral human. Yeah. Well, with a Bigfoot, usually, okay, there's going to be a couple of different options with a Bigfoot because they're either going to stand there and observe you and you observe it and nothing happens. You can just turn around and walk off or you just can. looking at each other. It will disappear eventually. It's not going to come up and shake your hand. I can promise you that. Um, or there could be like an alpha. Uh, they're very territorial. And uh, and you will know if you have crossed their boundary. And uh, and it will do something that we call bluff charging. It might, it might run at you, but just run. <laughs> okay, just run. Just turn around and go and leave uh, if that happens. Yeah, just take yeah, off running. You're not, you're not trying to challenge it. You literally are like, no. I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything. <laughs> no. Wouldn't it be funny, though, if there was a patty around with all these kids and the patty just walked up to a human and, like, handed the human her kids and was like, I'll be back in an hour. <laughs> like, what does that mean? Take care of them. <laughs> I need a break. <laughs> like, the <laughs> woman. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, this has been awesome. I love this. I'm going to ask our audience. I have an idea for a second show, which I'll talk to you ladies off camera. Mm -hmm. But is there anything you ladies want to end with before we close out? Anything? Well, just from my side, I found this absolutely fascinating. And yes, I'm definitely going to invite you onto my channel as well, Jessica. And uh, I'd love to hear more about uh, you've got, I think, so much to share. Uh, and not just on this topic. So I always love a mind like yours as well, which I'm going to go dig, dig, dig. And I uh, would love to would love to know more about what you do. Actually, I know Bryce has been speaking about you for a long time, and I've 
it's been on my mind to to invite you on uh beginning of the year anyway so now that we're kind of like halfway through the year already <laughs> just about right um i would yes i definitely would like to to uh, have you on aquarius rising africa as well and talk about all sorts of other things too so yeah fascinating and thank you very 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 informative thank you well thank you oh that that would be a treat i would love to come on your show too uh and talk about this i mean i love i love big footing it's my thing i, I started off as a bigfoot field researcher and uh and i've i've ended up being a, a youtuber with the you know the cryptid huntress uh so it's just really fun getting to spread the knowledge and talk about bigfoots and the cryptids especially you know just just meeting people that have had the same experiences that i have that have the same mind and not, not that everybody has to have the same mindset but just people that are kind of um we're all in the same boat here we're all trying to figure things out we're trying to you know figure out what else is being hidden from us and what are the dangers you know my my thing is i like to inform the public about the dangers uh of of what's out there so um exactly. so yeah, this is this has been a lot of fun thank you for having us bryce i'm so yeah. I, i'm gonna put I'm going to put the Cryptid Huntress and Spaced Out Radio because Jessica is a host on Spaced Out Radio on Sunday night. So I'll put links to those. And then Shanti, obviously, Aquarius Rising Africa and Solutions with Shanti. I'll put all their channel links down in the description box below, guys. So if you're not subscribed, I don't know why you're not subscribed if you're not subscribed, but go and get subscribed to all of their all the channels all y'all all the channels for sure <laughs> um, i cannot wait i have an idea for a part two so we'll discuss that when i hit the end button here but you guys thank you so much and and it's such a weird and wacky world out there and i know the cassiopeians say the veil is thinning and they call them window droppers um beings from other densities are actually uh oh they're accidentally being seen because the veil is they don't mean to uh oh you know so i find that hysterical especially for the yeah, hairy face staring through your window don't be I, shocked i like i like that the cassiopeians are clever with their names the window droppers these like <laughs> they're just walking through our world thinking that's oh, hilarious the window droppers and all of a sudden everybody's looking at they're like uh oh you can see me like you can see me let's <laughs> <laughs> pick for it out yeah <laughs> Oh, you didn't see anything. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Wow. Thank you, Bryce. Really yeah, fun. I thoroughly you. enjoyed this. Hopefully by next time I film, I won't be so freaking close to the camera. I feel like it's... <laughs> You're all good. So, all right, you can you afford guys. to be close to the, ca to the camera. I'm definitely going to be filtering this video because I'm so close to the camera. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, guys. We will talk to you all later. Bye, everybody. Yeah.